Hello people, welcome to Gurukla. I'm Jai. So today in this video, we will be talking about remote file inclusion, which is abbreviated as RFI. So without wasting much of your time, let's get started. So if you have directly landed onto this particular video, I would like to let you know that this is a series of video lectures where we discuss most of the vulnerabilities present in web application in the previous video we have spoke a lot about local file inclusion and we have exploited local file inclusion in dvwa web application so i will leave you uh, the link for the complete playlist in the description box below and i would recommend you to check that out so in this video we will try to understand what exactly remote file inclusion vulnerability is and we will try to exploit the dvwa web application by using remote file inclusion vulnerability and we will try to establish a reverse shell using remote file inclusion and we will also find out the hidden statement which is not found out in the previous video so now let's get started what exactly remote file inclusion is so remote file inclusion is a type of vulnerability that occurs in most of the web applications when an attacker can include a remote file uh, typically through a script on a web server so in the previous video we spoke about the local file inclusion where we can modify the url so that the web application will fetch any file that is present in the web server itself so that was happening uh, fetching the file content which is locally present in that particular server so here in the file uh, remote file inclusion uh, vulnerability there is a small difference the difference is like instead of fetching the locally available file we will be fetching the files that is remotely available so an attacker can host a malicious file in the server and he can redirect the web application to fetch the malicious file or script from the some other server so that that particular scripts will be executed in this particular in this particular web application so that the entire web application becomes vulnerable and the attacker can take control over the web application so that's exactly what a remote file inclusion is so now we will uh, graphically see or we will try to understand how exactly the remote file inclusion attack is performed so let us assume that we have a, a dvwa web application so this is what we considered as dvwa web application which is running on the browser so we very well know it is how the dvwa web application is and for the dvwa web application to function properly we have already set up the dvwa server so this we will consider as dvwa uh, server and we have used apache server for this and then we have configured sql database for the proper functioning of this particular web application so any request that is made on this particular dvwa application when you click on any particular file or if you request any particular page to be loaded on this web application a request will be sent to this particular dvwa server and then the response will be sent to the web application and then the page is getting displayed as simple as that so now what an attacker might do is in case if he identifies that this particular web application is vulnerable to remote file inclusion where i can include the file remotely which is not present in this particular server so what an attacker could do is let us assume that i have an separate attacker machine so this is the attacker what he will do is he will create a temporary server and we can call that as malicious server so this is malicious uh, server where he can load the script or any file according to his particular chance and let us assume that now as of now for the demonstration purpose we will have a uh, script here which establishes a reverse cell so this particular script when it is loaded on any web application that web application will create a reverse cell to the attacker's machine so let us say that the attacker machine is listening here so this is the listener so let me assume that i am listening on port number one two three four and then uh, this particular server is hosted on http service and port number 8000 so that is how the vulnerable attack will happen so first of all the first and foremost step is to set up a server which contains a malicious script and in, here in our case this script will actually 
establish a reverse shell on any web application which loads this particular script so that is what the attacker is an attacker is ready with the listener so if the script is being executed the script is going to create a reverse shell connection between the attacker and then the web application so that the attacker will have complete control over the web application so that's how it makes so what happens here is by exploiting the remote file inclusion so when the url is submitted with certain modifications what happens is the request will be sent to this particular server instead of this particular server so this server will not be sent will not be served or this will not be reached now this request will be sent to this particular server which is malicious server in our case and this server will return the script file which is going to establish a reverse shell connection with the attacker's machine so once this particular shell is been gone there it creates a reverse shell connection with the attacker's machine so that the attacker will have a complete control over this particular web application and he can execute any sort of commands and then he can he can achieve whatever he wish to do so so this is how the remote file execution will work and now let us see the entire thing uh, with some practical scenario now so here is our web application up and running so what we will do is we will first uh, create uh, a reverse shell script uh, there is certain predefined reverse shell script available in the kali linux itself so what we can do is we can just copy one of the reverse shell script to our uh, folder which is present in the desktop so as you can see there is a folder called rfi in the desktop and there is nothing on this particular folder we are going to host this particular um, folder as a http server and we are going to reach this particular uh, folder from our web application so for that we need to copy the reverse shell script and this is what the location where the reverse shell will be located so this is where uh, the predefined php reverse shell is loaded and i'm just copying it to desktop and rfi folder so let me just hit enter so that uh, the reverse shell is actually copied over here and we can just click on this so we can actually see ah, here we can just enter the ip address of the machine to which it has to create a reverse shell so here we need to enter our own machine so let me check what is the ip address so if config so 10 0 2 and 15 so i will just enter the same here so it is 10 0 2 and 15 and i would like to respond on port number say 3000 uh, what we can do is we can just file save this so now our reverse shell script is ready so this is our reverse shell script and now we will have to load this particular or we have to host this particular script on a http server so kali linux by using python we can host a simple http server and that is what uh, we are trying to do now so we can just type python um, hyphen m http server and let the server can serve on uh, it okay i just want to move to this particular directory which means so okay cd home directory rfi and from this particular directory we can just host it on python so python hyphen m http server so let it be 8000 okay now we can clearly see that we have this particular file serving at http on port number 8000 we will check if this particular file is accessible through our web browser so it is http colon double slash 10 0 2 and 15 colon 8000 so when you hit enter actually you can see that we can able to access this particular file using http so you can also see that it has received a get request and this has served this particular file so our server is up and running uh, which is containing a malicious script which is going to uh, establish a reverse shell so this is all functional so we can just close this 
our HTTP part is done. Now this particular file is hosted onto HTTP server. Now the attacker want to set up a uh, listener. So listener hyphen LNVP. The command is already discussed in the previous videos. So here we are trying to set up a listener at 3000. This is what we have set it up in the um, script. So now my attacker machine is listening on port number 3000. So now only thing what we have to do is we will have to make our DVWA application to fetch our file from the our server. So let me go back here. So what I can simply do here is so this is simply fetching whatever that we give here. So what we can do give here is HTTP colon uh, double slash 10 0 2 and 15 port number 8000 and reverse shell dot php so as you can see the file has been successfully fetched Sci file has been successfully fetched and then now the listener is actually listening onto this particular we got a reverse we have established the reverse shell connection with the web application so we can simply type ls to see what are all the web application sorry all the files available here and we have these many folders present over here so now our challenge is to read the contents of um, the hackable um, slash flag so let me just change the directory to cd slash where uh, slash dub 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 slash html uh, and then i can list the contents here and i can change to on dvwa from here and then I can see what are all the directories available and I guess there should be a folder called hackable yes we have a folder called hackable so I will change move to that particular directory uh, so okay hackable and if you see what are all the files present here we have a directory called flag so we can change to flags and then when I see the files here now we have uh, fi.php which is what we just wanted to read so what I can do is I can simply read the file fi.php and I can hit enter so now actually you can see the contents of this particular file let me zoom in for better visibility so when you look at the file called fi.php you can see there is a first statement bond James Bond and now you can see the second statement here and as you can see there is a third statement here which we have revealed so that at this point we have just completed the challenge to read all the five statements and now we have the fourth, stat uh, fourth statement here which is actually encoded so this particular encoded statement uh, was reflected back in the response line that we have seen. So here is the fifth line. So totally we have seen all the five statements present in this particular challenge. So I think now we can safely exit this reverse connection. So now we have exited that and now the page is also getting done. So this is how a remote file can be included into our web application and we can take advantage of that. And this doesn't uh, need the file to include it to, from our server. We can also include any HTTP file. So we can also include google.com also. So HTTP colon double slash google.com. Yeah, now you can see that it has actually fetched the index page of google.com and then it has actually loaded into our particular web application our web application content is also loaded because the first part of the url says it has to fetch the contents of um, vulnerability slash fi so these are all the contents which is loaded at the bottom and it also fetches the content from google.com and then it is displaying over here we can see the contents of google.com which is present over here so that is how the remote file inclusion vulnerability will work so now I guess you have a clear understanding of how exactly remote file inclusion attacks will work and we have just demonstrated how to execute the remote file inclusion attacks. 
So in this session, we just spoke about what remote file inclusion vulnerability is all about. And then we have exploited the remote file inclusion vulnerability. And we just established a reverse shell connection using a malicious server, HTTP server. And we have also completed a DVWA challenge where we actually read all the five codes to be uh, found out. And the defensive techniques to mitigate LFI and RFI we have actually discussed in the previous video. In case if you have missed it, the link to the complete playlist is available in the description box below. You can just check that out. And in the next video, we will be talking about file upload vulnerabilities. And we will also see how file inclusion vulnerability is different from file upload vulnerabilities. So stay tuned to Gurukla. I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, it's bye from Jai and happy learning.